Bash is always a great time and it's really exciting to see all of the new data coming out in myeloproliferative neoplasms. Now, I want to emphasize that clinical trials take a long, long time to mature and to get what we call phase three data before approval. So what's really exciting about this year's ASH is we have a number of new drugs in the pipeline that are at early stages of development, meaning that there's been rationale in, in the laboratory and from other observational studies that these drugs may be of real benefit in myeloproliferative neoplasms, but are really just starting to be investigated in humans. So there are a number of new drugs that were presented at ASH this year, most notable the drug imatelstat, which is a telomerase inhibitor, which actually has been investigated in myeloproliferative neoplasms for many years and is approved for other diseases. Um, so there are multiple studies looking at imatelstat in patients with myelofibrosis. What is really unique about one of these studies is that an endpoint is overall survival, distinct from the usual endpoints, which are spleen and symptom burden, which are, are no doubt important to myelofibrosis patients, but really focusing on overall survival, I think is a really forward thinking endpoint and is of you know utmost of importance to myelofibrosis patients. So really looking forward to see how that data matures over the next years, because as I mentioned, it really does take a lot of time to accrue the patients, to investigate how they're doing in particular for an overall survival endpoint, to put the data together and to really analyze it and demonstrate efficacy. Another drug that is, you know, advancing in clinical trials is Selenexor, which has been investigated in other hematologic malignancies as well. And it, the Selenexor, what it does is it prevents a lot of proteins, many of which are involved in cancers, including myeloproliferative neoplasm, from being exported to the nucleus. So basically traps them in the nucleus so that they can't do their bad functions. And so that makes it very attractive for lots of different cancers. Um, and Selenexor is being, again, evaluated in myelo myelofibrosis in multiple different studies, either in most studies are in combination with ruxolitinib or another JAK inhibitor or sequentially a Selenexor first and then another JAK inhibitor, which again, I think it's too premature to really make any definitive conclusions, um, but would really keep an eye out next year for more mature data that's coming out from those studies. And then I know everybody is very, in particular, calreticulum mutated patients are really excited about all of the, I guess you could classify them immunotherapies, things like antibodies or CAR T cells or vaccines against calreticulin because of the special feature of calreticulin, what your mutations make us like a new part of the protein, which the normal calreticulin doesn't have, which really makes it a prime target for immunotherapies. One Drug of really great interest is the Insight compound, which is an antibody to calreticulin, which was very promising in preclinical models of MPN. Again, really, really exciting, but want to emphasize that it's, you know, it's just simply too, too early to make any definitive statements. But again, really exciting and a lot of great potential, but really want to see what happens. And, you know, when we have more data from more patients and, and seeing how, how helpful that is. And another aspect in terms of JAK inhibitors, though we already have approved four different JAK inhibitors, ruxolitinib, fedratinib, pacritinib, and momolotinib. And all of those JAK inhibitors are one type of JAK inhibitor, which basically keeps the JAK2 protein, it sort of locks the JAK2 protein in its active form. But there are a different type of JAK inhibitors that target the JAK in its inactive form, sort of locking it in its inactive form. A JAK inhibitor is being developed by Ajax Pharmaceuticals, 
It's a different type of JAK inhibitor, which makes it unique from all of the other ones. Again, very exciting that we would have, I know we have four JAK inhibitors, but this is a different type of JAK inhibitor in for treatment of myeloproliferative neoplasms, which theoretically could target the mutant cells a little bit better. So again, really looking forward to that, but too early. So I think that, I know I'm saying it's too early for a lot of things. With clinical trials, things sort of ebb and flow. Things really need time to mature and gather data. So we're in a lot of drugs at the early phases that are very exciting, but just need more time for data to really be gathered. Another aspect of ASH is not only clinical trials, but there's also a lot of basic science that is presented at ASH. And I think that's really important because it's from the basic science that the clinical trials are emerging. The initial ideas are gathered from the lab or from animal models or from observations from humans. And that then provides the rationale for clinical trials. There were a number of interesting basic science studies, one looking at how different mutant cells compete with each other, for example, JAK2 and TET2, and that may shed some light on why in, interestingly, a good proportion of patients who have a JAK2 positive chronic myelo, like PV or ET or myelofibrosis, when they get a leukemia, their leukemia cells actually don't even have the JAK2 mutation. So we're sort of as a separate, it, it occurred separately. And there was a, a study that was presented that shed light on competition between JAK2 mutant and TET2 mutant cells. The JAK2 mutant cells could enhance the growth of the TET2 mutant cells, which was very interesting. Also, another study on obesity and how obesity may impact a JAK2 mutant cells. That was a mouse model study, but again, very interesting. So I think that there were a lot of new things in the pipeline that is going to spur on new clinical trials. So all in all, a really exciting year, but I think there's a lot of seeds there that are going to grow and really looking forward to seeing what, what these seeds grow into in the coming years. Mm-hmm. 